Arkansas, December 28, 1987. Ex-military Ronald Gene Simmons walks into a law office and shoots a secretary. He then passes through the office of an oil company, a grocery store, and finally to the shipping company Woodline, where he previously worked. He leaves behind a bloodbath everywhere. The attack lasts 45 minutes. When it was over, Ronald had killed two people and injured four others. Finally, after shooting his former boss Joyce Butts, of Woodline, Simmons surrendered to a secretary there. He said that whoever heard him got what they deserved, then waited for the police. When officers arrived, he surrendered his weapon without any resistance. However, Simmons' most brutal crimes have yet to be uncovered. They happened a few days earlier. When police were unable to contact the Simmons family, two officers were dispatched to the family's isolated home on the Ozark Plateau. There, next to wrapped presents in a decorated Christmas tree, lie the bodies of 12 of Simmons' relatives. Each was covered with a coat or jacket. A short time later, the bodies of Simmons' two infant grandsons are also found, wrapped in plastic and hidden in nearby parked cars. Authorities realized Simmons had started with his own family nearly a week earlier. Ronald was born in 1940 in Chicago. After his father, William, died of a heart attack in 1943, his mother, Loretta, remarried less than a year later to a man named William Griffin, who worked as an engineer for the U.S. Army. In 1957, Simmons left school and joined the Navy. While assigned at Washington, D.C., he meets Bersabe Rebecca Ulibri, whom everyone called Becky. They married in 1960 in New Mexico. Simmons left the Navy a few years later and moved into the Air Force. Over the next 18 years, Becky bore Simmons seven children. By 1979, when Simmons retired, he had accumulated numerous honors and awards for his service, including a Bronze Star and the Vietnam Cross of Valor. But the Simmons are not one big happy family. In 1981, allegations surfaced that Ronald sexually assaulted his 17-year-old daughter and she even bore him a child. Authorities in New Mexico began an investigation, and fearing that they will lock him up, Ronald left with his family. Their new home was a large property in Dover, Arkansas. The place was so remote and isolated that there was no telephone or sewage system. In addition, everything was surrounded by a high fence. It was there that Ronald made his family complete one last task. To dig a deep hole in the yard. He told them it's for an outdoor toilet. Indeed, it would be a grave for half of them. Just before Christmas in 1987, Ronald decided to kill his entire family. His motives never became fully clear, but several theories have emerged in the years since the tragedy. According to one of them, Ronald learned that his wife was secretly planning a divorce and this sent him off the rails. I don't want to live with dad anymore. I'm a prisoner here, and so are the children. This is what Becky wrote to their son shortly before the murders. Every time I think about freedom, I want to get out as soon as possible. According to another theory, Ronald went crazy after his daughter Sheila rejected him and subsequently left their home to get married. The secretary, who he killed at the law firm, is also believed to have rejected his romantic gestures. On the morning of December 22, Ronald bludgeoned his wife and their oldest son with a hammer, then shot them dead with a .22 caliber handgun. He then brutally strangled his three-year-old granddaughter. 
After the first three murders, Ronald waited for the other children to come home. When they all arrived, he told them that he has presents for them. He suddenly attacked them and killed his other four children in the same way, he strangled them and drowned them in a barrel of water. On December 26, four days after the initial murders, the rest of the family arrived for the Christmas holidays. When Ronald's son Billy and his wife Renata entered the house, he shot them and then strangled their 20-month-old son. He did the same with his eldest daughter Sheila, her husband, and their child. Last was Ronald's 21-month-old grandson, Michael. Ronald dumped seven of the corpses in the backyard, in the grave that the victims dug themselves, and left the rest in the house, covered with coats. He then got in the car and went drinking at a local bar. Later, he returned home, sat on the sofa, opened a beer and turned on the TV. The bodies of his closest relatives were scattered all around him. The carnage continued on the morning of December 28. Ronald went to the nearby town of Russellville, where he murdered 24-year-old secretary Kathy Kendrick at the Peel and Eddie Law Firm office. He shot her four times in the head. Next came the Taylor Oil Company, where he shot owner Rusty Taylor and employee Jim Chaffin. Rusty survived, but Jim died from his wounds. The frightened employees called the police, but Ronald was already on his way to his third destination, the Sinclair store where he previously worked. There, he shot two employees, who fortunately survived. His last stop was again a previous workplace, the Woodline Freight Company, where he shot Joyce Butts. I wanted to kill Joyce. Only Joyce. He said to the secretary to whom he surrendered. Ronald was in a cell at the local jail when the police went to his home in Dover and came across the carnage there. The veteran was sent to Little Rock State Hospital for a mental evaluation. There, psychiatrist Dr. Irving Kwa found that he was not insane and could be tried. Ronald was tried twice. He was first convicted on May 12, 1988, for the deaths of Kendrick and Chaffin. Two days later he was sentenced to death by injection, plus 147 years in prison. He did not appeal the sentence. The then governor of Arkansas, Bill Clinton, signed the death warrant. At the second trial, which ended on February 10, 1989, Ronald was convicted of the premeditated murders of 14 of his relatives. He received a total of 16 death sentences. He was set to be executed on March 16, 1989. At his final hearing, he said, in my case, anything short of death would be a cruel and unusual punishment. Ronald himself chose to be killed by injection. He was ready to die. He had resigned himself. He wanted it, says John Harris, one of his lawyers. I think he felt he was going to be hurt, so he should strike first, John concludes. But the lawyer also points out that there are others to blame for what happened. If the authorities had arrested him in 1981 after allegations of abuse against his daughter, the murders probably would not have happened. But prosecutors at the time said they dropped the charges at the family's request. On June 25, 1990, Ronald Simmons was executed by lethal injection. None of his living relatives came for his body, nor do anyone wanted to bury it. He remains the worst mass murderer in Arkansas history.